Hey everyone! Today we're going to be talking about how I design my crystal soaps to make them look like real crystals. And while we're doing that, you're going to watch up on the screen, you're going to see me making kyanite, kyanite crystals. I don't know. Um, I don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, but I do know how to make soap look fairly close to, um, to what the stone can look like. And that's a big key to how I approach my crystal designs, um, is what can it look like. Um, I'll be talking a lot more about that in a, in a second. Um, first, I want to tell you a, a little bit. I know all of the important information as far as what I'm using is going to be up on the screen. So now what am I doing here? I'm creating the elements of the crystal. I'm creating the bits that become the inclusions in a crystal. Inclusions are uh, sometimes looked on as um, mm, flaws. That's, that's the word I'm looking for. Like a flaw in a diamond uh, sometimes looks like a crack or sometimes look, looks like a bubble or a, a like something's in it. <laughs> um, an inclusion can look like a bug trapped in amber um, or plant matter trapped in, in amber. It can look like little mini crystals um, enveloped within another crystal. It can look like... Um, little mar it can look like marbling marbling effect is one of the things we'll talk a little bit more about this in a bit and the different types of inclusions and and uh, what you can do with them and how you can approach them I'm not I'm giving you ideas here I'm not going to uh, specifically show you every type of inclusion I've ever made although you will see some of those in the pictures at the end Real quick, uh, kind of a little side mention here. What you see me making there is a fairly transparent soap using only micas. Um, just reminding you that you don't always need to use uh, liquid soap dyes. I do love me some liquid soap dyes. And uh, non-bleeding soap dyes such as Zenicolor, which you will see me use a little bit later in here. Um, but mica can make a fairly, and I used a lot of mica in this because I didn't want it to be totally transparent. I wanted, um, I wanted the elements of this to stand out, the shape of them to really stand out within the more clear soap that they will be embedded in later. So they have a little bit of color and a lot of glitz. Um, and that's kind of a look that you'll hear me talk about later that shows up in canite crystals. Um, so right now I'm just making the look of the um, strands or bands. Well, they're really not bands because those are usually more bent or rounded. But these are, these are kind of like strands, sort of like striations, but not the, quite the same texture. Although canite does have a striated texture to it, which is, which is, little tiny layers on the outside that look like they're etched in. Um, that's kind of all through Kyanite. It looks, it's got like a stranded kind of interesting look to it. Um, uh, I hope you'll look up the crystal if you've never seen it before. You'll see a couple of images of it at the end because I do a side, side by side comparison of the crystals and the soaps. Um, more than just this soap, I show you a variety of ones I've done just so you can get an idea of, of how I look at the design and then try to replicate or at least come close to. I, I can't always replicate exactly. And sometimes I don't want to. Sometimes uh, I think, oh, I can make a design that looks better than that particular crystal, but still gives the flavor and idea and look of the crystal. So if somebody's looking at it, they know what crystal I'm making. Can you just make a solid color soap, transparent or not, and cut it in the shape of a crystal and call it a crystal? Sure, of course you can. And I honestly encourage you to do that if you're in a hurry. 
these take time and design and and uh, blood, sweat, and tears to create the more intricate ones. Quick note, you see me cutting here. Watch how I'm cutting. I know most of you have seen this before if you've watched my crystal soaps, and I've shown this a billion times, it seems like. But I'm cutting on an angle. I didn't on the first two cuts because I just simply forgot. But once I got going, all of those angles were, all of those cuts were made at a bit of an angle. Angle your knife carefully. Um, and especially the first few cuts. And then once you get there, you'll see the rest of the chopping when I'm bringing these down to finer crystals. Because whatever this mineral is that grows alongside and inside of kyanite, they're, they're very small white crystals. Um, and fairly small, especially in, I'm, I'm trying to get, um, the dimensions, not the dimensions, but the, the ratio correct so that, that it looks, so the crystals aren't way bigger than, than what the little stripes are that you'll see the stri I'm calling them striations for now. I don't know if that's an official term for the look of the blue part in it. Um, but see, now I'm just taking that knife straight down. And it's still because those crystals each have some of the um, element of of having angled. Well, I'm angling it a little bit. But I, I know for a fact that once you get a few cuts made with the angle, you're still going to end up with an angle, a crystal looking soap. The angles do make a difference. If you just start chopping soap, um, it's really easy to get just like plain, plain squares and triangles, and they don't look the same as a crystal. Um, it gives you a look of either a faceted look or um, a natural growth look of, of the way the crystals are growing. And what you see me doing here and saw me doing earlier with the, um, with the super sparkles is I'm, I'm, Instead of putting them in a bag and shaking them, which I can and have done, and you can do too, um, this gives a little bit more dimension to what you're adding. It catches the sides and the facets a little bit more. Um, a little, it, it highlights them instead of just covering them. If you just cover them in glitter or mica, then you're just you might as well have just made them out of that color. If you're catching the facets and you're catching the cuts and the angles, it really highlights that look and in your soap. Um, what you see me here doing is I wanted you to notice that that is set up already, the soap I'm pouring on top of. It's the same soap. I just want these little blue stripes here to look as if they're encompassed in or floating in that soap. If you have seen K and I before, you will kind of recognize that look that there are it doesn't stay like this I cut it up in bits but it will you will see that those blue lines are kind of encompassed in a more clear blue soap that is definitely sparkly um, the element or the the term for the type of sparkle that you see in k and I is is uh, aventurescence you will also see it in a lot of aventurine uh, crystals, aventurine gemstones. Um, it looks like, and we'll be talking about these types of elements in a minute, but it looks like, basically it looks like little flecks or flakes of a glittery metallic um, substance. It, I mean, might as well be glitter is what it looks like. Um, if you've ever seen Oregon sunstone you'll see flecks of copper that are very shiny and very metallic and they do look like a, a glittery um, element and that's what they are so um, it's easy to recreate that look in soap because we have a lot of eco glitters that are very uh, friendly in soap and work quite well um, I probably will do an Oregon sunstone soon okay so here we go. Um, I'm just helping you look at Google a little bit. I know you know how to to Google things, but pay attention that you have images on when you're searching for your crystals. And pay attention to that little row that I circled a minute ago at the top, and there's the arrow I circled. You can keep going with those ideas and get more ideas. So you start with a crystal name, and I'm going to keep talking about Googling here for quite a few minutes. 
you are going to start with a name of the crystal you want. Let's say you're looking, you're searching kainite, like I was. Put in, you can put in kainite and see what comes up on the images. Find a few images. Um, and then you can look across that row at the top and see what it, where it leads you. Um, you can then start adding other, uh, other things. Kainite crystal. Start adding other search terms. Kainite stone. Gemstone. Mineral raw, natural, polished, faceted, grade A, uh, canite ring, canite cabochon, pendant, rock, rough, unpolished, rough hewn, rough cut. You could probably keep going with the types of descriptors that people use for gemstones. And the reason I really recommend you do this with a variety, you don't have to do every single one of them, and you probably will come up with some that I haven't thought of yet. But you want to do a variety because you want to see what does the rock look like when it's polished. Maybe that's an easier way to do the stone or to do, to do a soap in that, in that stone that will look like it. Or maybe the rock element is easier um, or maybe just cooler. Sometimes this one is certainly not the easiest um, <laughs> the easiest way I could have made a kainite soap. I could have just taken the glitter and put it in a blue, light blue soap and put it in that beautiful oval mold that just makes anything look gorgeous because it looks like a cabochon and called it kainite and been done with it. Um, but I wanted it to look like the stone um, and a little bit more like the rough stone that you find when, when it's being mined. So... Um, that's why I suggest you look at a variety and see when you cut it, what does it look like? Sometimes um, some of the stones look so much more interesting when you cut into them and facet them because they're going to show a little bit better those uh, inclusions that, that we're talking about, what I'm making now. These are all inclusions of some type. And they, uh, they really kind of help determine or help people who are looking at it and trying to see what, um, trying to figure out what the stone is. I mean, that's how you, the indicators of the stone, um, a lot of times are the, are the, um, inclusions. You have striations, which are very prevalent in canine soap. I, just because of the way it's formed, I did not really include real striations in these, but I could, and I have thought about it. I could come back and what, what you'd want to do for that is create some type of a texture that has lot that's lines. You could maybe use, um, a vegetable peeler that has that little, little grated look on it. And you could just lightly go over the edge. It, the reason I didn't with this is, I mean, it's going to be washed away right away. Uh, but you still could if you wanted to. And I may do that in the future. I don't know. I haven't really decided. But um, so some of the other inclusions to look for, things like, um, yeah, those little lines and layers that are striations. They give a textured look or etched look sometimes. But veining, um, marbling, those are elements like what you see in uh, turquoise, the, the black or sometimes brown or sometimes gold veining. It looks... Um, Looks like marble, sort of, and you see it in marble, obviously. Um, that can be achieved either through marbling soap, which I am doing a video very soon on. Um, but it can also be achieved using the thin soap sheets that I make for my chiffon rainbow soap, or um, I've made for a variety of other soaps as well. But it's something I commonly use in my gemstones to create a vein look or a cracked look. Um, or just like one element attaching to another. It just looks like a little bit of another gemstone or mineral kind of running through it. Um, and you'll see some of these, again, you'll see some demonstrations of these at the end. Not demonstrations. Images of these at the end and how I um, create those looks. So, um, yeah, cracks. Uh, can be done using that. They can also, you can make a mica line, but you've got to make sure you're pouring pretty hot so that it will stick together when you're doing a mica line with melt and pour soap. It's a little more complicated than with um, cold process soap because it's, it with cold process soap, it's going to stick unless you 
add a whole bunch. Um, but you want to take care not to add too much mica and to pour the second layer has to be poured fairly hot. Um, crystalline look obviously those crystals up there are crystalline and if you if you have it clear it was going to show up or clear ish it's going to show up um like see-through transparent crystals so but this particular mineral gemstone whatever it is um has has pure not pure white but it has white that is not uh, transparent it has a very opaque look to those little crystals so that's what I included in here because I'm going for a fairly <laughs> real look. It's not perfect. Um, you also have uh, needles or rutiles in many soaps. Sometimes it's called hair, uh, depending on the kind of soap you're looking at. Red hair quartz um, is one. Rutile, rutilated quartz. Um, that literally can be done with needles. You can take a needle or a pin. I mean, obviously be careful and sanitize it of course but um you if you stick it into fully set up clear soap or transparent soap it looks like it, you can see it it looks like rutiles so um i haven't demonstrated that in here or shown images in this but i may do one down the road um if if enough people were interested i can do that it's a real easy technique to do um you have phantom crystals which are also called internal crystals, ghost crystals. It's basically a crystal within a crystal. So the crystal that's the same type growing within another or, um, or even the other crystal grew around it. I don't know which came first, the chicken or the egg, but a lot of soaps will have soaps. <laughs> Listen to me. A lot of crystals will have um, two growing one within the other. Um, it happens a lot in quartz type crystals, but I know it can happen in others as well. Um, think of, oh, there's another one, a dendritic or dendric, depending on who you talk to, um, or dendric. The, the um, look of moss agate, it basically looks like you have moss or um, little veins. Um, and it's different from veining because it looks like it's branches. It looks like it's branching out specifically that that's that dendritic look um that can be achieved by using using a little tree mold if you have a mold that has branches um specifically but there's plenty of other ways you can achieve that as well um, i probably will do a moss agate down the road because just because i want to it's one of my favorite stones i think it's really cool um common pairs of crystals is something to look up too if you look up ruby then also look up any other crystal you see that grows with it, ruby and zoestite, gorgeous bright green soap, the uh, soap, gorgeous bright green crystal, the zoestite, and you or zoocyte, I'm not sure which, um, but it's beautiful when um, when it's in when the ruby is growing in that because it is such a contrasting color, and um, it doesn't quite look Christmassy. Because the ruby, the true color of many rubies anyway, and that's the other thing, look up to see the shades. So many different shades of the same gemstone, depending on where it's grown, uh, where it's grown, where it's found, or uh, where it, did it grow, what elements were around it when it, when it was formed, um, it will, it can change the color. So yeah, ruby is red, um, but it is also hot pink. Um, and that's, that's a real common look for it. Um. I think blood, 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 pigeon blood ruby or something like that is a little bit more on the red side, I believe. Um, so you want to do that. That's another reason to look at many different ones is to look at the colors and the different. And if you if you're not good at mixing colors, look for one that is, you know, that matches a mica that you have. Um, that way there's less work and less headache for you. Um, Aventure essence, I kind of talked about that a little bit with, with the kaonite because it's present in the kaonite um, crystal. Uh, it, and I, it's, uh, the, the element is sometimes called flex or platelets. And it's just talking about the little metallic look, uh, metallic looking pieces. And it is metal actually, or at least I know it is in the, in the Oregon sunstone, it's copper. So I'm not sure what is creating it in within kaonite um but i imagine mica would be an element that is uh or be a, a crystal that kind of 
adds that kind of look because you know mica is actually a stone um or mineral mineral i don't know the exact definition of it so i'm not positive on that but i know many micas were originally made using that crushed up but um most people go with synthetic micas now for many reasons part of is how they're mined um how the stones or crystals or whatever you want to call them are mined um so common pairs i covered i uh, another another example of that of the common pairs would be malachite with um, azurite. Um, I think that's right. The green with the blue kind of blended together. They grow together pretty frequently, and that happens with many crystals. You'll find some of them together. Sometimes more than one type of crystal, which can be a real fun rabbit hole if you want to go down that one. Um, so anyway, that look is flex or platelets is sometimes called the metal part of it. Opalescence is another um, is another look of that. It's another um, look isn't right. It's another um, type of that platelets being um, showing different colors. But that is made pretty much, I believe, by water being trapped in the stone. Um, little bits of water trapped that create the colors. I'm not positive on that. So, you know, don't, uh, don't come after me <laughs> if I'm wrong. Um, chatoyancy is what looks like a cat's eye. If you've ever seen a cat's eye stone, that is what chatoyancy is. And there's a lot of other stones that have that look. Um, kind of thinking of like golden sheen obsidian, but I may be wrong on that. Uh, but there are a lot of them. Um, there's a type of ruby that has uh, um, like a star, star ruby. And I know that's the wrong name for it. But it, it has that that uh, cat's eye look to it um, in a star shape. Um, ad, adular, ugh, adularescence, I can read really, um, is the look of moonstone. It's also called the Schiller effect and it's a glow frequently blue but also can be in gold and probably some other colors as well but it's a glow that looks like it's below the surface and guess what you can achieve that by using one of the micas like um, blue moon from mad micas or another interference mica those are they appear white but when the light hits them and there's a darker background behind they're going to show gold or rose reddish color or green depending on the one you purchase I have one that's a gorgeous aqua that is so pretty um, but you just you need to think about if you're doing that have a darker background to your soap it will show up better it will show up the the bluish portion of it or whatever that color is that it that it reflects is going to show up better if you have a darker background and that doesn't mean you need to have the whole thing dark. You could just put a little bit of a dark layer at the back, especially if you're doing a cabochon shape um, or like, you know, like a polished oval, like you would see in a ring. Um, you put that on last and that's your little, it kind of helps your colors reflect. It's similar to the effect you get when we're doing the resin look um, that we back it up with black because it helps those colors to really um, reflect the light properly. Um, instead of just the light going through them, sort of, which is what happens if you don't have black background. You're just not, or it doesn't have to be black, just has to be dark. Um, so that is the adularescence moonstone is just one of the effects, or one of the types of stone that has that glow to it. Labradorescence is more of a metallic look, and that, that can come in many different colors, but a little side note here, you'll see it in um, rainbow moonstone because rainbow moonstone is not really a moonstone. It's not a true moonstone. It is actually a f form of labradorite. And some people will even call it white labradorite. Um, it's gorgeous, but you can make that using those interference micas for sure. That is one of the um, things I use to make my labradorite. I, I have some sheets of black soap and I paint them um, with the various interference micas and um, even some that are a little bit more glittery like if I want 
a little more sparkle to them like Sparkle Me Aqua from Mad Micah's is one I've used. Um, uh, Sparkle Me Gold, I think they have Sparkle Me Gold. And they have Sparkle Me Red and they have Sparkle Me Aqua. That one's gorgeous. Um, anyway, those look beautiful in uh, Labradorite soap, as does Blue Moon. Uh, Blue Moon really gives it the look to me, so I usually use that in combination with other combination with other colors um, painted on. And then I I scrape away a little bit, as you will see. There are other elements to that look of Labradorite that frequently has cracks um, or that layering look. Um, but a little bit bigger than just in, um, in say like the canite soap. Uh, it's uh, bigger striations, I guess. I don't even know if we would call it a striation. It's more like a layer, um, layers that kind of crack and have peeled away, but they look like they're encompassed deep within the stone, and they kind of are. At least within a soap, you can make it look like that. So you're kind of seeing here the end result after I'm cutting them. You see I have a few of the bars of blue kind of going in various directions because that does definitely happen within a true canine crystal. Um, I don't want to forget to say I think I, I think I forgot to add. I don't know if I mentioned the malachite that the con concentric rings or circles um, is, is another element you'll see in like crazy lace agate, that type of stone. Um, there are different ways to come up with that one I'm I'm maybe someday I'll show those it's too hard to describe I think um, <laughs> but you can come up with your own if you can do um, like the bullseye kind of look you can definitely create that um, and and put those embed those into your soap so that would be another type of inclusion you can do and as you see these have the bars and they're kind of done that's the way they stack up together like that they're definitely layered. Some are going to be longer than others. And those little white crystals, that white mineral, and I do not know the name of it. Shame on me for not looking it up. Um, but they are frequently attached to or within the stone itself or, or cluster of the, the stone. As you'll see in a moment, I'm going to be bringing up um, my my uh, final pictures, one of the final pictures of these so of this soap, but then I'm also going to show you some um, elements of not elements, some um, examples of my soap next to the rocks. Um, and these are this is something I did um, a long time ago for something else where I was promoting my crystals, and so you're going to see those pictures, and we'll talk a little bit more about sorry. A little bit more about um, how, not really how I made it, but I'll try to throw out a little tip here or there, or like here's where I used the soap sheets or whatever. Um, but I just want to give you ideas. You don't have to do yours exactly like mine, but look, my main, I guess my main point here is look at there's the kyanite. That's the more of a single. You see those layers, and there's that blue stripe. And the one in the bottom left, I think that one looks the most like my soap because that's what I was going for was that image. And then here's just a similar design with the emerald. This is the Labradorite. This is what I was talking about. And those, those are the kind of cracks that they have in it. And I'm showing a second one of those just because I have done them in different styles. There's my smoky quartz. There's my lapis lazuli. And... I know they're not perfect, but they do resemble it. And here's my citrine. There are a variety of shades to citrine. This is just happens to be the one I chose. Rainbow fluorite. I probably will do that one and the crystal, the turquoise. I will probably do those on camera at some point. The ruby's pretty simple. I did just use the soap, um, the soap sheets for that. This one's a bit more complicated. I don't know if I'll ever get to do it on camera or not. I might. And I can probably do an agate slice, although hopefully not make it look like a burrito. Um, if you've gotten this far, I really thank you for watching the whole way through. I hope I can inspire you to try a variety of ways to make crystals and different designs and different styles. Thank you so much. And if you like, please subscribe. Bye.